For MLflow lovers and my friends using Langchain, now with native integration of MLflow with Langchain, you can log and load your Langchain models. That means you can technically log any experimentation that you do with NLM applications, namely RAG, from all inputs, outputs, the models used, log everything for evaluation and even reproducing your RAG or LLM based use cases with just one single line of code that is called mlflow.langchain.autolog to automate all this tracking end to end for yourself. Then, let's go! Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video thank you all right it goes without saying that mlflow is a fantastic tool for tracking all your machine learning based experiments beyond just tracking you can actually leverage this end-to-end -end for your ml mlops um, process mainly even for deploying your models and now with gen ai era a lot of people dealing with llm based use cases the question is can we integrate MLflow with LLM-based applications? And the answer is yes, and even beyond that, you can integrate MLflow this time with Langchain, which is one of the very popular open source LLM package that it's widely used in industry. Now, for this video, we're gonna see how we can use this integration and what gonna be the benefits. As you can see on my screen, Langchain is just one way of integrating MLflow with your LLM process. You can directly do that with OpenAI or even Llama Index. So starting with Langchain, what is the benefit and what you're sort of going to actually track with automatic tracing? We just simply call it mlflow.langchain.autolog. You are going to technically log any inputs and outputs that go into your LLM application. For example, if you have a rack chatbot all inputs outputs tokens can be logged later on can be used for evaluation you can even track your evaluation results with mlflow and even you can log your model that you create for example your rack model by mlflow as well so let me show you a quick demo on how i ran it ran this locally and running on my local host to show you how it looks all right here's my first quick example as you can see you need to add your open ei key here so i removed that before the recorded video and I'm setting the tracking URI of MLflow to my local machine, but obviously you can run it anywhere. If you, you are, let's say, using Azure ML or Databricks, you can technically use the, the MLflow server running there, so you don't need to host yours separately. And the very first thing that you need to do, typically with MLflow, you know that you need to start setting your experiment through a name, which is the name that I chose, Langchain Tracing. And then we just calling MLflow Langchain Autolog, it will automatically start capturing all those components that I told you. Please note that I have specified two different parameters with the value true. One is log models, one is called log input examples. So technically what I'm telling, these are optional by the way, what I'm telling to Autolog for Langchain with MLflow is when you're logging everything, make sure you also log my model and also log the inputs that goes to the model. By the way, when I say model, that doesn't mean you're going to have an instance of GPT-4, let's say, logged for you, not really. By model, I mean the wrapped flow that you're creating. For example, if you have a retrieval process for RAG, that retrieval Q&A will be a model by itself that on backend you'll call external LLMs like OpenAI or even local ones that you have. So let me show you what else you can put here and where it is coming from. Here is the official documentation of MLflow under line chain section. And as you can see, you can technically start logging traces. By default, it's true. That means the flow of how you're calling the LLM. If you have different steps, finally you get the response back. All that process will be logged that I'm going to show you. Model art artifacts, this is the one that you saw I added to true because default is false and your Langchain model will be logged when it is true. Model signature, if it's set to true, it's gonna describe what is the model input and output. Again, model here is a Langchain model artifact. Input example, I talked about that, and the same thing for outputs. So, 
In this example, when I set my auto lock with all these parameters, now this is the time I set what is my LLM, so I'm going to use OpenAI. And then here's my template prompt that I'm using prompt template of language chain that here is a prompt with some dynamic variables inside person question, which I have it here as a variable. So I create that as a chain on language chain, and then I can call it with invoking this chain by values for those parameters, which is person question or another one person question. So I ran that with using my terminal. As you can see, the response response is printed here. But I was curious to know what happens to my MLflow server. So let me switch to my MLflow server. All right, as you can see here, my experiment name was Lang Chain Tracing, which I have specified here. So let's click on it, which I already did. And you'll see that there's one because I ran a couple of hours ago. So it has been created at this time. It says the source and it says the model is Lang Chain. So why the model is locked as well? Because we set that parameter to true. Now let's click on that model to see when we talk about line chain model, what does that mean? So when I click on it, you will see that if I click on model here, not only it has the steps in the YAML format, but also if I click on ML model by itself, it is telling me what is this model type and where it's coming from. What are the input output examples? You can see name and person were the variables that we had inside the prompt. So it truly captured that and understood this is actually a variable that we have in the prompt, which goes to the input model that we have, which is coming from OpenAI. And uh, we have some input example captured. This is actually the example coming in from my uh, notebook. And then the requirement that takes to typical MLflow artifacts that you have to make this process reproducible is already here. So any packages that I had installed was here in the YAML format as well. The example I showed you, this is my Conda YAML. So technically, anything from your operating system point of view is also captured to let that code run successfully. So going back to the experiment, if I click on it, you can have the overview as well, created by who, at what time. And if you want to capture some metrics manually, you can have have that also added. And in the artifact section that I just show you, it will also give you an example of how you can later on load this model again, which is a lang chain model that on back end use OpenAI model uh, to run it um, anywhere. So here, as you can see, when we want to do inferencing by an MLflow model, we do that predict, but for machine learning, we had like tabular data using pandas, but for here, you can just have a dictionary of your input prompt to get the response back, which I'm going to show you in the next example. Okay, so here now I have another notebook. Sorry, it's a dot by code. And I created a simple RAG application using face database as my vector database. And regardless of what the RAG is, it's just a simple retrieval process to answer a question. I just wanted to see how it works with. Um, tracking and logging everything. So the same thing, you need to add opening a key here and start setting MLflow. Again, here I'm using my local machine. So here I have a function that I'm going to fetch some federal documents to use it for chat with your data scenario. So you can skip that. This is just sp specifically for this example. And then this function just to simply save those fetch documents from internet. And I, th I think it's using beautiful soup to scrap that later. Yes, there you go. Then here I'm creating a face database, which is developed by Meta, and it's a it's a well-known open source vector database that you can run it in your local disk. So we're doing some splitting and chunking. Now I have my uh, local face vector database ready. Here is a list of URLs, which are the PDF files that I want to have them chunked and convert to word embeddings for the retrieval later. And this is the time that I can start logging everything in regards to this rack scenario with just simply setting an example, uh, sorry, a name for the experiment. So when I run this, if I go back to my MLflow dashboard, you'll see that legal rack is added here because that's the name I chose. And here is your lang chain model. And as you can see, the type of the model is retrieval QA. This is actually coming in from lang chain. And inside this LangChain model, we're saying that use OpenAI and for retrieval, use that vector database we have specified on the top, which is a face uh, vector database. And this function is just loading uh, the most similar chunks using the vector database in face. And then in order to log everything, I want to say that before, log model as well with this information. 
it's a lang chain model which is retrieval queue at the top you can specify the pass you can specify which one what is the loader which my loader is actually coming from this function that use face and then we say persist directory mflow logs the content in this directory that we specify as an artifact in in subdirectory named persist directory so we have a specified this on the top if i go all the way up it uses my local temporary directory with face index added there okay so now we have logged the model and of course i want to start using this model that we have logged and again as i told you using python with mlflow you can load the model that you have uh, logged using mlflow and given the model uri that means technically whenever you want to run this rag chatbot again you just can simply load this langchain model with the model uri you don't need to run this code again or have it somewhere and obviously i want to try this model with after loading this model here dot predict i told you you can use the dictionary here instead of like the pandas data frame to have your query going there and get the response back and i can also use auto log to um, log everything all the traces whenever that's coming from here so after running this all end to end let's see what happens so i go to legal rack as you can see there's one which just logged the model this is exactly what happened when we ran this and then when we ran this for auto log for logging models and traces and everything that's how the second one came in so let's just start with the first one again i'm not going to repeat that again like everything artifacts and stuff that we just talked about that is again captured but if i click on traces that's the interesting part you'll see that it perfectly captured the query that i had and the response which we had it here uh, plus the duration that it took the run day the execution time and you can add it in a specific tag and if i click on this you can see all the backend steps that it took for your rack length chain model to get the answer back so you'll see that first the retriever worked that was the query going to the face and here's the result so you can click on it to see that how it captured the result from face database and you can see the rest of the context here then the rest of the uh, information which is shipping to the, qu the question with the context that we retrieve back to LLM and LLM got the response using the OpenAI for me and you can see how each step took from the duration point of view on the right side here so I think this is technically a great capability that on, with just on fly and calling just auto lock I was able to capture this amount of information without any manual effort here and again later on you can have also some evaluation results added and be cautious both of them are under experimental phase so you might see some more and more changes coming in the same thing for the previous lang chain tracing that we created i forgot to show you if i click on traces for any of the questions and answers i had directly to open a model it has been captured for me and you will see that the trace is simpler because that was not the right it was just a simple input going into the llm and we got the llm output all right uh that's all about uh, the tracing section and the log model section of um, mlflow one more thing that I can show you, if you click on Langchain Models here and later on clicking on Metadata, you can have the same information that we talked about, about inputs and outputs. And at the same time, given that we used Persist direct, uh, da uh, Directory, as I showed you inside the code, we can have the path to the index uh, of the face database that we have specified in our code. This time, if I click on ML model, you will see that the model type we have is retrieval QA. This is the line chain model that I told you. So I hope now you understand what do we mean by saying model. I'm not directly locking any LLM here. It's just a line chain model. With the rest of the thing that we have specified, like persist directory, I talked to you about it. And again, the input and output examples that we had on the top. All right, that was all about this video. I hope you enjoyed. If yes, would be very thankful if you click on like icon and make sure you share your thoughts or questions and comment sections below the video. Thank you all.